starting with a scene when a child playing ball on the seashore. This boy finds a surf helmet with a camera on it. When turned on, the child sees the moment the camera's owner is attacked by a shark. Next, we meet Nancy, and alongside her is Carlos, the person who will take Nancy to the beach her mother once visited. On their way, her friend Anna sends a message that she can't join them for the beach trip. Of course, Nancy is upset because Anna always spoils her plans. But this time, Nancy will continue to go to the beach. Upon arriving at the beach, Nancy is amazed. Not many people know the location of this beach, and only a few people surf there. Then, Carlos says goodbye and immediately unloads Nancy's luggage. Without waiting long, Nancy starts surfing. In short, Nancy is already in the middle of the beach, and she meets two Mexican men who are also surfing. The three of them enjoy the big waves together. After enjoying surfing for quite some time, Nancy decides to take a short break. Nancy calls her sister Chloe and shows her the beach she is visiting. Chloe is very surprised to find out her sister could find the beach their mother often visited. In the middle of the conversation, Nancy's father appears and greets Nancy. Nancy and her father briefly argue about Nancy's decision to drop out of medical school. Her father tries to persuade Nancy to return, but Nancy refuses because she is constantly haunted by the sadness of her mother's death. Soon, Nancy decides to hang up the phone. Nancy goes back to the sea and she meets the two Mexican men there again. The two men suggest Nancy return immediately because it's getting very late, but Nancy wants to play with the waves one more time and will return soon. After the two men leave, Nancy feels something moving under her, and soon a dolphin appears right beside her. Nancy is very happy to see many dolphins there. Nancy tries to move further into the sea. After swimming further, Nancy finds a floating whale carcass surrounded by many seagulls. Then, not long after, the birds leave, startling Nancy. Nancy decides to return to the shore, but behind Nancy, a shark is seen approaching and makes Nancy fall from her surfboard. Nancy gets back on her board and suddenly something pulls on Nancy's leg. It turns out the shark bit Nancy's leg. Nancy struggles to free herself from the shark's bite. After getting loose, Nancy sees the whale carcass and decides to climb on top of it. While on the whale, Nancy realizes her wound is very large, and when she looks towards the shore, the two Mexican men have just left the beach. Nancy screams as loudly as possible, but it's inaudible. Nancy feels the shark trying to attack the whale to make Nancy fall. Nancy then decides to cross over to the coral reef on the other side before the shark flips the whale. After reaching the coral reef, Nancy looks around and sees no way out to the shore. Next, Nancy looks at her wound and sees it's very large. Nancy decides to stitch her wound using her accessories with the medical knowledge she has. After stitching her wound, Nancy ties her leg with a swimsuit. The night passes, and the clock shows one in the morning. Nancy feels cold. She decides to use her swimsuit again, but to rebandage her wound, Nancy tears off a piece of the sleeve and inserts it into her injured leg. Nancy noticed the bird beside her was still there, and it seemed injured. She decided to go back to sleep, ignoring the bird. Shortly after, early in the morning, Nancy woke up again and saw her surfboard. She planned to retrieve it and started to enter the water. She proceeded slowly, but before she was halfway there, Nancy saw the shark approaching quickly and swam back to the coral reef. After saving herself, Nancy noticed a man lying on the shore. He was unconscious from intoxication. Nancy screamed as loudly as possible, and fortunately the man saw her. Nancy asked him to use the phone in her bag to call for help, but instead of helping, the drunk man took Nancy's belongings. As he was about to leave Nancy, he even took her surfboard. When he was about to enter the water, Nancy tried to warn him about the shark, but it was too late. The shark attacked him too. At 12 o'clock, six hours before high tide, amidst her exhaustion, Nancy was awakened by the sound of the bird beside her. As she came to her senses, she saw the two Mexican men she met yesterday returning to surf. Nancy yelled, asking the two men to come back to shore to seek help. But they didn't believe her warnings about the shark, thinking there were no sharks at this beach. While trying to approach Nancy, one of the men was attacked by the shark. Naturally, the other man started to believe and tried to swim to the coral reef, but he disappeared midway. Nancy looked around but saw no sign of him. When Nancy was silent, the man appeared behind her. Nancy tried to save him, but unfortunately the shark pulled him back into the sea. 
Now Nancy was alone again. At five o'clock, 25 minutes before high tide, the shark was still circling around Nancy. She noticed the bird beside her hadn't left and tried to tend to its injury. After succeeding, Nancy saw the helmet with a camera owned by the Mexican man. She planned to take it, but first, Nancy observed the shark's movements. From the whale carcass to the coral reef, the shark needed 30 seconds, so that's how long Nancy had to cross to retrieve the helmet. However, once she reached the other coral reef, Nancy struggled to carry the helmet due to the current. The watch on her wrist lit up as a sign that the shark was near. Nancy quickly moved her limbs away from the water. She waited for the shark to move away from the coral reef, and when it did, Nancy re-entered the water to fetch the helmet. After successfully retrieving the helmet, Nancy was startled by the shark's proximity. Shocked, Nancy fell while trying to escape. She realized the shark was also struggling due to being stung by the coral. Seizing the opportunity, Nancy managed to climb back onto the coral reef. Then Nancy was reviewing the camera's contents and saw the moment when the shark was about to attack the Mexican man with a hook still lodged in the shark's mouth. She looked towards the buoyant lighthouse, which was quite far, about 30 meters away. Nancy estimated it would take a minute to get there. In short, Nancy made a video asking for help. If anyone found this helmet, she also informed them of her plan to cross over to the buoyant lighthouse. She knew it was risky, but it was her only hope because the coral reef would soon be submerged by the high tide. Nancy even requested that her video be sent to her home address in Texas in case she didn't survive. After making the video, Nancy threw the helmet with the camera into the sea and was now ready to cross over to the buoyant lighthouse. Before that, Nancy saved a bird by letting it float on a piece of her surfboard as she was about to cross the water. Then she encountered another challenge. Jellyfish appeared around the coral reef in the buoyant lighthouse which explained why the shark stayed away from that area. This provided Nancy with an opportunity to cross, despite having to endure jellyfish stings. As Nancy endured the pain from the intense stings, the shark still approached her, but it seemed to dislike the stings and eventually kept away from Nancy. Nancy looked around and noticed that the lighthouse chain was close to her. She quickly swam towards the buoyant lighthouse. However, as she swam, the shark approached her again. As Nancy reached the lighthouse, part of it broke off, but luckily, Nancy fell onto the shark's body, managing to keep her distance. After the shark moved away, Nancy tried to open a box on the buoyant lighthouse, which turned out to contain flares. Unfortunately, as she opened it, the flare gun's ammunition fell into the sea, but she managed to retrieve one and fired it, hoping to signal a distant passing ship. Nancy's luck was short-lived because the flare didn't function properly while the rest of the flares remained floating in the sea. Nevertheless, this was her only chance. Nancy decided to collect all the flares from the water. After successfully gathering the flares, Nancy fired another one. But unfortunately, the passing ship failed to notice Nancy's signal as it had already moved too far away. Nancy was engulfed in despair. Meanwhile, the narrative takes us back to the start where a young boy, who found the helmet Nancy had thrown into the sea, reveals the origin of the camera that washed back to Nancy. As her blood continued to drip into the ocean, it attracted the shark back towards her, causing the buoyant lighthouse's chain to snap and destabilize the structure. Resolved to fight back, Nancy used her remaining flares to shoot at the shark. Despite her efforts, the shark relentlessly attacked the buoyant lighthouse, forcing Nancy to climb the structure. She fired her last flare, which ignited a trail of oil from a whale carcass. But the shark remained undeterred and continued its assault, further destabilizing the lighthouse and causing Nancy to fall. In a desperate bid to evade the shark, Nancy noticed the lighthouse's anchor with its sharp edges and concocted a plan to lure the shark close to the anchor. Despite her struggles, Nancy finally managed to stab the shark in the mouth and kill it before making her way back to the shore. It turns out that the young boy who found the helmet was Carlos's son. Carlos, upon inspecting the surroundings, found the body of the man who had earlier stolen Nancy's bag. Shortly afterward, the boy had to urgently signal towards the sea, prompting Carlos to swiftly rescue the drifting Nancy. Carlos attempted to revive Nancy, who soon came to and was relieved to see that the bird which had been with her had also survived. 
Subsequently, she hallucinated, envisioning her mother in front of her. Nancy felt profoundly grateful for having made it back to land safely. One year later in Galveston, Texas, Nancy had completed her medical studies and was back to surfing with her sister, Chloe, radiating happiness. And the film ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing, you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Cheers!